Hey everybody, this is Barbara from Inspire Paper and Designs. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a basic vertical calendar using Canva. So I'm on Canva's homepage. If you go over here where it says create a design, you click on that. And from there, I scroll down to where it says create custom size or custom size, I'm sorry. Change the pixels to inches. And I'm going to make it eight and a half by 11. And then click on create a new design. From there, the first thing I like to do is make sure that the uh, rulers and guides are available or open um, with my document. Now, mine are, are already here, and that's because I leave it up. But if you want to know where to find it, if you go to File and you go to View Settings, show rulers and guides is what i use you can also do margins or show print bleed but i prefer rulers and guides and the reason being is because i set all of my margins to 0.5 so i actually use the ruler feature to help me with that now you may be slightly off like it may not be exactly at 0.5 and that's okay you want to get as close to it as possible to um, again, you're just kind of allowing yourself that allowing yourself that space so that way when you do create, you know that it's not going to get cut off. Okay. So the easiest way to create um, a vertical calendar or any calendar for that matter is to use the table feature. So if you go to elements, click inside search elements, scroll to you see tables, you click on tables, and I always choose this first one. And I'm just clearing that out so that you can see. All right, so from there, I have the basic table set up. So the first thing I want to do is I definitely want to add, of course, some more columns so that I can have seven for the seven days a week. So I click inside the first one. I hold down the shift key. I go all the way down. And then while still holding the shift key, I click on these three dots at the top and I do add a column. And I just keep adding a column. Now, I know earlier I was able to like highlight multiple columns and create multiple columns at the same time. Um, I tried that last time. It didn't work. So to keep the video nice and simple, I'm just going to hit add columns. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we set. Now I want to make this um, five weeks. So then I'm going to go down here to the bottom, click inside, hold down the shift key all the way over. Click on the three dots over here on the left, and then I'm just going to add one row to give me a five-week calendar. So from there, I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. And actually, I'm going to add one more row because that's the row I'm going to use to include the days of the week. Now, there's two ways that you can do this. The first way that I'll show you very quickly, if you just click on text, and let's say you just add some text. Let's make this 15. I'm going to drag this in a little bit. Undo. There we go. Now, one way that you can do this is by going up and just adding the text box and have it matching the lines. And then, of course, I would have to decrease this. So let's try 10. And then let's do sun, let's write Sunday first. You can do it like this and just copy and paste all the way across. smaller drag it in a little bit and then once you do the first one canva kind of takes the hint that that's what you want to do mm -hmm. now that's one way of doing it and you may have to just adjust it slightly which i think this i just have to move over slightly all right so all right so that's one way of doing it and then you would just kind of go inside and just type in the you know the correct days the reason why, if you notice, these guides are automatically popping up. You definitely want to make sure that you use that because it definitely keeps you on track. As you can see, the point zero two one is letting me know that it's spaced evenly. And of course, you guys know you would change this to reflect, you know, the days of the week. So that's one way of doing it. And let me see. I may just leave it like this. I'm going to show you a second way as well in case you want to... In case you want to use the table feature and have it like in a box, so to speak. I prefer this way just because I'm used to doing it this way. But 
I want to make sure that I show you different options so that you can choose what works best for you. So that's the first way that you can do it. The second way is, like I said, you can go ahead and add a row. And then you can just make this row smaller. So let's say if you want to make it like to make it like to fit the size, so to speak, click in the first one, hold down the shift button. I have a MacBook, so that's why I'm using the shift key. Click all the way over and then we can change this to one. By changing it to one, it allows me to drag this up. And then, of course, that makes this super big. So if you click in this one, hold down the shift key, go all the way over and then go down, you wanna make sure that you highlight this inside part and not this top row. And once you do that and you click on it, from there you wanna to go to where it says size rows equally, it size the rest of them equally while still leaving that small, okay? From there, what you can do now, of course you can always go in, let's change the font. You can change it to seven if you want but that's gonna adjust the size and then you can always type the days of the week inside, but see how small it is? I don't like that, but you could always do that and just increase the size if you want. But for what I'm gonna do, if you're going to use this method, I would say just take this, highlight these up at the top and just make sure you only highlight these, group it together, and then you can just move them down and then that way it's automatically inside. Either way works fine, it's whatever your preference is. So I'm gonna leave that in there for now. Next thing you wanna do, you wanna now add the date. So if you double click inside, and I'm gonna type the number one, you see how the one pops up in the middle. Now, if you wanna change it, you can always make it smaller. Um, I think I wanna make it 10. So what I'll do is again, click in the box, hold down the shift key. I'm gonna go all the way down to highlight just this portion where I'm gonna put the numbers. And I wanna change this, let's make it seven. That's a little too small, maybe 10. Okay, so the number is already inside. So what I wanna do is I wanna put it up and in the right hand corner. So again, click inside, shift key, highlight in the num where the numbers are gonna be. I'm going to go up here to where it says spacing, vertical alignment. I'm going to push, click on this down arrow and see how it jumps up. So now it's up at the top, but it's still not over to the right. So now I'm going to go over here to alignment and I'm going to click until it's to the right. So the number is right there. And again, if it's too small, you can always make it larger. And then I'm just going to double click in each box and just hurry up and get the numbers in there for you. Wrong number, sorry. And we're just going to pretend that this is um, for January 2024. I don't know if this is correct or not, but again, for the purposes of this video, I just want to go ahead and just quickly show you how to get this vertical calendar created. And if I skipped over a number, I do apologize because I'm trying to type it in as fast as I can. All right. So we have that done. So the next thing I want to do, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I like having this space down here to write notes. So I'm going to make a notes, notes lines for that. And I'm leaving this up top so I can put them up. So let's say, let's go over to elements and let's get out of tables and let's click on line. And where it says shape, I'm going to click on see all. And I'm going to go ahead and select the line. I'm going to drag this down about here. So let me scroll this up a little bit so you guys can see. So with this line, it's not, it's not as thin as the rest of them. So I'm going to go over here to line style. And I'd like this as far as it's not like with the dashes or the circles. I don't need it to be rounded. We're going to adjust the weight. So I'm going to make the weight about two. And two looks to be about what these lines are as well. So we're good with that. And then this would just be to change the color of the lines if you want, but I'm gonna leave everything back black for purposes of the video. I'm gonna drag it all the way over till it's touching the other side. Then I'm gonna duplicate. And again, this can kind of be at your own discretion, 
But remember, once you do one, it kind of sets the tone for the rest. So I'm going to leave it at five. And then I like to use the tidy feature just to make sure it's nice and even. So I'm going to highlight it. Go over here, click the three dots where it says more align elements. And it looks like it's already even because if it wasn't, it would give me the tidy up feature from here. So that's good. Um, I don't need to group it just yet. We'll see if I need to. I will. So next I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight this because I want to drag this down. Maybe up a little bit. So as you can see, if you see the 0 0.688, that's just, again, letting me know that everything is in alignment and it's showing me, you know, that it's even or even if it's off, it's going to show me that. So let's bring this down a little. And then I'm going to bring the lines down till it's touching this bottom one. And then I'm going to go ahead and go up here and I'm going to ungroup this just so I can click on Sunday and bring that down and that'll be our notes line. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna move it over here, type the word notes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move that over to the side, okay? If you wanna make this larger, we can, let's see, make it 15, okay? So now we have a note section, we have the basic calendar, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our heading or add our, our month. So I'm going to choose, you know what, I think I want to do a script font. So I'm going to go to add a text box, drag that up to the top, click over here, and I'm going to do calligraphy and see what comes up and see if I can find something pretty. Now, I like to use, I'm going to move this over. Now, remember, anything with the crown, as a Canva Pro user, you can use this font for free. So this is a pro feature. I am a Canva Pro user. However, because of the terms of use with Canva, I want to stick with free elements only. So let's see if we can find something that's free, which doesn't have the crown. And I know with this particular font, it's not a lot. I'm going to see if I can just grab something just for purposes of the video. See what this looks like. No, you can't really read that. Hmm. Let me see. I'm trying to see if I can find something. Maybe let's try Sacramento, let's see. And then I'm going to type the word January in here. Okay. We'll use that one for now. And then we'll make it a little bit smaller. So let's try 76. I do realize it's touching, so... All right. Now, so we have our title in here and you can stretch it like if you want to make sure it's even, even. You can always stretch it to the edges if you want to show that it's even. I'll make this a little bit larger so you can see what I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and I'm going to make this. I'm going to change it to 2023. Make it a little bit larger and put it like inside. There we go. Put this inside. There we go. And that's our basic calendar. So you could always, you know, sell this as is if you want and just, you know, make the fonts pretty so that it can sell. One thing that I will show you that you can do is you can add color right here. So if we go to, let me see, if we go to elements, and I'm going to get rid of this one. And if we go to like this, um, shapes and you just select this rectangle box or i'm sorry square you could always if you want like bring the square up and in drag it over make it a nice pretty color let's see oh okay we, we'll just i'm just for purposes but you can for purposes of the video you can change the color if you want to any of these colors and then what I would probably do is maybe push it back so that way the lines show. So alignment, I'm sorry, layer. And then with layer, you can go ahead and push back. And then that adds a little bit of color to it. Or you could also, if you want, we'll undo that. And let's take this same box and maybe put it here. Drag it down to here. And maybe we can make that one gradient 
So again, that's just to add a little bit of color to it, but I'm going to, in the next video, I will show you how to add clip art and other things to it using different places where you could purchase clip art for commercial use. If you have any questions, please put it down in the comments. If there's something that you would like to see, put that in the comments as well. And as always, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, guys, I will talk to you later. Oh, before I go, real quick. If you would like to download this, I am so sorry. First, you can save it. So we'll say, we'll name it as Vertical Calendar. You can go over here where it says Share. And then you can go ahead and click Download and download it as a PNG or a PDF print. I usually select print when it comes to printing different files, as even when I'm like selling it on Etsy. If you want to make this a template, you would click on share and you would go to template link. And then this would be the link that you would share for other people. So let's say you want to share this. Um, you want to sell it as a template for other people to use and make changes to it to sell. Once you copy this link and give them the link to use, they will not have access to your original. They will have their own copy. So you saw that I clicked on here and copied. So if I was to go here, right click and do paste and go you'll see that is um basically creating a copy for that person to use as you can see right here and then once they click on use template it's going to let them know up in the file the name file that it's a copy and then that way they can go ahead and rename it and that's their copy which does not touch your original which we will see in a few seconds there it is. See how it says copy? So that's what the other person would have, and they would be responsible for, you know, renaming that. Um, again, now I can say thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, guys, have an amazing day.